Greetings and welcome back. This is N1IR, and we're in Section 7, Going Solo, your first amateur radio transmission. Let's begin. Okay, Going Solo. Going Solo, your first amateur radio transmission. So, in this block diagram here, we have a uh, transmitter and how a transmitter works. So, we have the microphone over on the left. It goes through the audio amplifier. It goes through a balance modulator. You have a crystal oscillator feeding into it. Filter, a mixer with a crystal oscillator and a frequency synthesizer feeding into the mixer. Uh, filter, an RF driver, RF power amplifier, output filter. Now, do you need to know all this in the technician? No, but uh, later on during the uh, the general portion, you'll have to uh, fill in the blank and, and figure out what uh, what blocks that it, uh, you have in your transmitter. So this is just a block diagram. It has a block diagram of a receiver. You have your antenna. It goes through an amplifier. Uh, it mixes. This is called superheterodyning, where it mixes two frequencies and either gives you the difference, uh, the filter, the IF amplifier, demodulator, and the audio amplifier. Okay, a keypad, a VFO knob, can be used to enter the operating frequency on a modern transceiver. So you can either do direct keypad entry for your frequency that you want, or you have a, um, a knob that you can turn either direction and go up and down the frequency. The squelch control on a transceiver will mute the receiver output noise when there's no signal being received. So um, if anyone uh, have heard static before on the radio, um, you can take that static out by adjusting the squelch knob up. So this is, a, this is an example of a uh, dual band, um, dual receive radio, and uh, it's actually two radios in one. So over here we have a volume control squelch and a VFO knob uh, that controls all the stuff on the left. And you got volume control squelch and VFO, all the stuff that controls the frequency on the right here, on the bottom. This radio here I would definitely not recommend for a uh, beginner uh, in amateur radio. Uh, I would really suggest a uh, 2 meter mobile. Uh, they're a lot easier, a lot simple to operate. Um, this is this starts getting very complicated with all the buttons and everything like that. And uh, But uh, later on when you get uh, a little bit uh, broken into amateur radio, then yeah, I would suggest getting one of these. Uh, I've have a couple of these, and they, they're really good radios. The carrier squelch circuit mutes the receiver audio by the presence and absence of an RF signal. So if there's no RF signal, the squelch is mute. Um, so it mutes the mutes the radio, so you don't hear that static going all the time. It drives you nuts if you hear the static going. Um, so you, you adjust your squelch circuit up, so you don't hear the static. Uh, when there is an RF signal, it breaks the squelch, and then you hear the, the incoming transmission. Simplex communication is the term used to describe amateur station as transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. So if you're on the same frequency, 146.52, this guy's on 146.52, you can talk to each other direct simplex. Or if you're in mobiles, uh, you can, again, talk to each other in simplex. Well, the station can communicate directly without using a repeater, considering communicating via simplex. So this basically, uh, so you don't tie up the repeaters, and um, and uh, simplex is, is really a good good method for close range communication. When an operator makes an on-air transmission to test equipment antenna, properly identify the transmitting station. So if you're on a repeater and uh, just stay a call sign, this is a test, and that's it. It's as simple as that. When making a test transmission, station identification is required at least every 10 minutes during the test and at the end of the test. Okay, the procedural signal CQ means calling any station. So you'll hear on the radio CQ, 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 this is N1IR, and then that's basically I'm calling any station. When choosing an operating frequency for calling CQ, you want to listen first, make sure no one else is using the frequency. Ask us if the frequency is in use. 
make sure that you are assigned the band. All these choices are correct. So you want to make sure you listen first, make sure no one else is using the frequency. Disco, this, you know, is the frequency in use, this is M1IR, uh, your call sign. Uh, make sure that you're uh, you're in your assigned band. So it, when you're a technician, you have assigned bands that uh, we went over in the last section. So all these choices are correct. When responding to a station calling CQ, transmit the other station's call sign forward by your call sign. So for example, um, I want to contact KB1 EVY. So I'll, I say uh, KB1 EVY, KB1 EVY. This isn't one IR. Let me get back on the right slide here. Okay, an appropriate way to call another station on a repeater, if you know the other station's call sign, is to state a call si sign identity with your call sign. Um, skipped over this one. When responding to a station calling CQ, transmit the other station's call sign followed by your call sign. So if I hear a station uh, KB1 um, YI, I'll say KB1YI, this is N1IR. That's my response. Uh, if another operator reports that your station 2 meter signal were strong just a moment ago, but now they're weak or distorted, try moving a few feet or changing direction of your antenna if possible, as reflections may be caused by multi-path distortion. So there might be things in the way. Uh, 2 meter is VHF, so it kind of bounces around a little bit. And uh, you could be behind a building, you could be... Um, you know, inside a car or inside your house, and uh, we call them hot spots. So we'll say, you know, move, move a couple feet, you know, and then you'll get your hot spot. Rapid fluttering sound sometimes is heard from a mobile station that are moving while transmitting. It's called picket fencing, and it sounds just like that. If you're, you know, uh, when you were a kid, you were running by a picket fence and you were talking, you could hear that variation. That 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 that. that. And the same thing with um, with RF. RF does the same thing. Uh, when two stations transmitting on the same frequency interfere with each other, it's common courtesy should prevail, but no one has the absolute right to an amateur frequency. So we've got plenty of frequencies out there. Just move. All right? You know, there's no, you know, there's no need to fight over a frequency. We've got plenty of them. Uh, QRM is the Q signal that indicates that you're receiving interference from another station. Uh, QSY is the Q signal that indicates that you're changing frequency. So the Q codes, uh, basically they were um, basically CW or Morse code shorthand um, that were, were created and uh, people do use them on voice, it's common on voice um, so you might hear that on uh, two meters. A popular operating activity that involves contacting as many stations as possible during a specified period is called contesting. So you'll have some weekends um, that you want to operate and uh, there's all sorts of different bands you can operate on these contests. And you try to contact as many stations as you can in that time period. Uh, we have something called Field Day, which is in the summer. It's the, uh, I believe it's the fourth weekend in June, either the third or fourth weekend in June. And uh, we just get on, it's all bands, and uh, we get on and try to contact as many people as we can. Um, and there's so many points. So if it's like uh, uh, CW or Morse code, it's worth a certain amount of points. If it's voice, it's, a, it's another set of points. If you're contacting digital, it's, a, it's another set of points. You know, it, it's all weighted uh, differently. When contacting another station in the radio contest, it's a good procedure to send only the minimum information needed for proper identification in the contest exchange. So in a contest, you're not in a rag shoe, you're not in a conversation. You just say your call signs and the um, information needed for the exchange. Um, for example, field day. I'll go back to field day again. Uh, so our club call sign is N1ZIZ, and uh, when someone calls... Uh, uh, N1ZIZ, I come back and say this is N1ZIZ, we are EMA, Eastern Mass um, 2. Um, so 2 is the uh, power that we have.